now on BBC One, the Lunchtime News with Lauren Taylor. Good afternoon. The US military says its helicopters have destroyed three small boats in an attack on a container ship in the southern Red Sea. It's the second assault by Iran-backed Houthi rebels on the ship within 24 hours. The US says the gunmen who launched the raid from Yemen attacked in four boats coming within 20 metres of the vessel. The fourth craft fled the area. The Houthi rebels say their actions are in protest against Israel's war in Gaza against Hamas who are designated a terrorist organisation by the UK. It comes as there were more Israeli airstrikes overnight. Shama Khalil's report contains some distressing images. Street by street, the battles on the ground in Gaza rage on. Israel is concentrating its ground offensive on the centre and the south of the Strip, with Hamas fighters continuing to resist the IDF's advances. The war is at its height. We are fighting on all fronts. We have huge success, but we also have painful cases. Central Gaza is the latest focus of Israel's military operation, with heavy bombardment on the densely populated Anuserat refugee camp. <laughs> Further south, in neighboring Deir el Balah, Palestinian rescue workers stand around the body of their colleague. He was killed in a strike near the Al-Aqsa hospital, where many of the wounded are being treated. This is the safe area where Palestinians were told to come to escape the fighting in the center. But as the military operation expands, safe areas for Gazans keep shrinking. The southernmost city of Rafah has now become the last stop for hundreds of thousands of displaced people, fleeing the heavy bombardment in Khan Yunus many using makeshift shelters near the border with Egypt. There is nowhere else to go from here. I hope that the war would end soon. I hope we can return to our homes, go back to school, return to everything that is familiar in the new year. The fallout from the war in Gaza continues to be felt in the Red Sea with yet another Houthi attack. The U.S. Central Command said that Navy helicopters destroyed three of four small boats used by the Iranian-backed militants as they attempted to board a container ship. This footage released last month shows some of the group's armed militias dropping from a helicopter and seizing a cargo ship in the southern Red Sea. The Houthis have claimed that their attacks on this vital shipping route are directed at vessels linked to Israel in response to its conflict with Hamas. As this year draws to a close, there is no end in sight for the war in Gaza or the suffering of its people. Well, another consequence of this escalating bombardment and um, offensive on the ground is the hindrance of humanitarian aid into Gaza. We've heard yet again from the United Nations saying that they have limited access to deliver humanitarian aid and that Israel only authorizes a limited amount. That's been disputed uh, by Israel. But as the bombardment continues, as this continuous movement of people happens uh, with the ground incursions, it becomes very difficult not only to deliver this aid, but to safely distributed to different parts of the Gaza Strip. Chaima Halil, thank you very much. Eurostar services have resumed this morning after all of its trains to and from London St Pancras were cancelled yesterday. The problems were caused by flooding in tunnels under the River Thames. Ellie Price is at St Pancras. Ellie. Well, the departures boards inside are all looking a bit more promising, but there are still plenty of frazzled and frustrated faces. Now, Eurostar haven't laid on any extra services today, and anyone who tried to rebook from yesterday today have now been told they can't because all the services are full. There was earlier a queue of about 70 people outside the ticket office hoping that they were, might be able to get on if other passengers didn't show up, but for them it's all very last minute. The first Eurostar train to leave London since Friday night pulled away just after 8 o'clock this morning. 41 services were cancelled yesterday, leaving lots of passengers disappointed and stranded and madly trying to reorganise their New Year plans. A little bit anxious because I'm just waiting to travel, spend the uh, New Year with my fiancé. Uh, he's French, lives in Paris. So um, we're just waiting to see who works for 
uh, French border police, so we'll just see what happens. We tried flying to Brussels, that didn't work out either, and now we're back to take a train today, hopefully. Yeah, they gave all the standby seats away, so we didn't have any seats on the, on the on plane. On the plane, so. This has been a disaster from the <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was all caused by flooding in two high-speed rail tunnels under the Thames. Pumping this much water out wasn't a quick job. We have cleared the water from both of the tunnels uh, that were impacted yesterday under the Thames um, and we're looking to run a near normal service uh, this morning. It's had a knock-on effect on domestic high-speed services too, though most seem to be running on time now. Eurostar say all speed restrictions on the line have now been lifted and all services will be travelling at normal speeds. But for many, it wasn't quite the bon voyage to 2023 they were looking for. Ellie Price, BBC News, St Pancras in London. The Australian journalist and documentary filmmaker John Pilger has died at the age of 84. He worked for a number of publications, including The Daily Mirror, World in Action and The Guardian, and was highly critical of Western foreign policy. New restrictions on XL bully dogs have come into force in England and Wales, meaning they have to be muzzled and kept on a lead in public places. Breeding, selling or abandoning the dogs has also become illegal in response to a number of attacks on people in recent years. The rules don't apply in Scotland or Northern Ireland. Here's Danny Savage. Police at the scene of a dog attack, one where an XL bully type killed a man. Elsewhere, this dog was handed in by its owner after it bit them. It was put down soon after we filmed it. Too many such incidents have led to a ban on these dogs. But of course the issue is that the aggression of a minority of XL bullies has led to all of them becoming a banned type and all face the consequences of the law change. From today, these dogs can only be out in public if they're muzzled and on a lead. That's it, you're all right. From today, it's also illegal to breed, sell or abandon an XL bully. That means rehoming them will be impossible. If they're not wanted, they're likely to be destroyed. We won't be able to take in any XL bullies. We won't be able to rehome any XL bullies. People are concerned about how to do muzzle training, so there's some really good advice out there on how to muzzle train your dog. Um, but they're also concerned about the dog not being able to be let off lead. So a dog um, that is an XL bully and registered won't be allowed to be off lead in a public place. And you can see how much he loves snuffling, so yeah. for him, this activity is going to be perfect. For months now, some XL bully owners have been taking their dogs to training. Bingo to get them used to a much more controlled life. Yeah, good boy. At first, everyone thought a ban means that, OK, that's it, you know, you have to say goodbye to your dogs. Thankfully, a lot of good information came out quite quickly and so people were able to see that that's not the case. Um, but, yeah, panic, stress, they're loved, fam they're part of the family. Can you judge a temperament like this or do you need longer? Uh, really, temperament's hard because um, for example, if we were saying um, th this dog's safe, I don't think we can ever say a dog's safe. Police will be calling on people who haven't declared their dogs. Existing XL bullies can still be kept if owners can prove to a court they're responsible. In cases where we believe the court may, you know, um, sort of approve an exemption, is we'll speak to the owner and say, look, they're obviously going to have to be spayed or neutered. The, the decision is with the court, but if you wanted to go ahead and do that now, things like the microchipping, uh, the insurance and things like that, and also getting the home environment ready for the, for the dog's return. Good lad. XL bullies have caused too many problems for the government to ignore. Yes, it's left many owners upset, but this is seen as the most effective way to deal with them. Danny Savage, BBC News. It's been quite a year for the singer Rick Astley, from enjoying a comeback to playing at Glastonbury this summer. Now Rick is ending the year with his own New Year's Eve show on BBC One tonight. Our entertainment correspondent Colin Patterson caught up with him at rehearsals. Don't tell me you're too glad to see. I'm never gonna give you up. I'm never gonna let you down. Well, Rick Astley, explain where we are. OK, we are in Camden, Camden Town. We're in the Roundhouse in Camden. Um, I've been in this building a few times. I've never played here, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but I've been here to see gigs. Uh, Biffy Clyro was the last band I saw um, in here, which was absolutely rocking. The Doors have played here. Wow, I didn't know that. OK, so don't put the pressure on Colin, thanks. Um, <laughs> I think the thing about this place, I think it's actually a real venue. When we're out together, that's 
think the thing about doing a TV show frightens me to death, to be honest. So we're doing a gig, and the BBC are filming it. That's the way I'm looking at it. So you were trying to tell yourself, I'm not presenting this, really? Kind of, yeah. yeah but you are. <laughs> so what can we expect? Well, we've got a couple of guests. Um, Charlene's coming. Who's, Charlene Spiteri. Um, yeah, Charlene Spiteri's become a friend of mine. And you've got the fireworks in between the halves we have, of Yeah, show. we're going to do like a 25 minutes up to the fireworks on New Year's Eve itself, you know, the 12 o'clock. Yeah. I think we could probably work out what the first one back in the <laughs> new year is. We're no strangers to love. You know the rules and so do I. Yeah, it's funny. Obviously, that song, Never Gonna Give You Up, has been part of my DNA now for over 30 odd years. And, um, as mad as people may find the fact that I still enjoy singing it, I still do. Because it kind of, I think it kind of like solidifies in my own mind how lucky I've been. What were your real highlights of 2023 then? Obviously Glastonbury has to be a highlight because I never thought I'd get to play that stage. I never thought I'd get to play Glastonbury, never mind the pyramid stage. Gotta make you understand. I'm never gonna give you up. I'm never gonna let you down. I'm never gonna. And the fact that it went so well and kind of like was just amazing. Twenty twenty four, your New Year's resolutions. New Year's resolutions. Um, I want to get fitter. Um, we're all feeling it a bit. <laughs> and um, No, but I'm serious. I want to I be able to give it all when I'm up there, so I need to get fitter. I need to spend more time on my bike, I think. Well, Rick Astley, have a very happy 2024. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Happy New Year to you. believe it's all over? Yeah. <laughs> Rick Astley rocks New Year's Eve is on BBC One from 11.30, except in Scotland, where the Hogmanay show presented by Edith Bowman will feature music from Katie Tunstall. New Year's celebrations have begun. Auckland in New Zealand became the first major city to mark the start of 2024. And Sydney, Australia, huge crowds gathered for one of the world's most spectacular fireworks displays. Millions of people are expected to take part in worldwide celebrations over the next 12 hours. That's all from me. The next news on BBC One is at six o'clock. Have a good afternoon.